Welcome back to the switch and click and today we'll be talking about how to type faster So many of you probably already type pretty fast So this might not be relevant to you If it is, there's an accompanying blog post down below that we'll link to on our blog switchandclick.com um, But first we're just gonna ask the question What kinds of things do you need to know to type faster? Like if I were to tell my dad maybe some of these resources will he stop hunting and pecking for keys or does that matter so the answer is that we looked at some research and read a lot of things and it doesn't matter what style you use to type um, as long as you have good posture you're not hurting yourself, you're using the right keyboard for your size, and you're using techniques that would be beneficial for you. Um, that's it. I mean, you can type fast. Uh, another important thing is knowing where the keys are on the keyboard. That's super important too. Um, if you're constantly looking down and looking at the screen and looking down and looking at the screen, it's pretty slow no matter how fast your hands move. So we looked up some research and the research concluded that whether you use five fingers or ten fingers, you can be just as fast as the other person. You don't necessarily need to take a class to be a fast typist. Um, touch typing isn't like the holy grail typing, although not looking at your keyboard is beneficial. I personally don't use the home row keys and we'll talk about that later. And they also concluded some other things. I'm gonna look. Okay, they concluded that both hands are moving separately while you're typing and they're not necessarily symmetrical even if you're typing like the same letter in the same area. So let's move on to uh, touch typing. So what is touch typing? So touch typing means that you're typing but you're not looking at the keyboard while you're typing. But it also includes that you're using home row keys. So home row keys are when your left hand is on ASDF and your right hand is on JKL colon or semicolon depending on what what it is if you're pressing shift or not but and then thumbs on the space bar and then um, if you don't look at your keyboard and you don't use home row keys then you're a hybrid typist so not necessarily a touch typist um, let's see what else so in the post, we also linked a ton of different resources, some educational specifically and some for practice on how you can improve your typing or learn how to touch type. It all depends on what you're looking for. There's some free ones, there's some costly ones. Some of them have limited access. So um, go check them out and see if there's anything that you like. I personally tried each one for a little bit. Um, but didn't really stick to any of them because I know how to type already. But I learned how to type with something called Jumpstart Typing, which is a game on the computer back in the old days um, that you might not necessarily have access to because it's so old. Um, so let's talk about hand size. So does hand size matter when you're typing? And the answer to this is it can, um, and, but there's always a but. So hand size, so like when you're playing the guitar, piano, or writing, like you're using your own techniques to adapt to your body's limitations or your body's um, properties to maximize the way that you do things. So for me, I don't use a home row keys because it makes not a lot of sense to keep my fingers on those keys and really stretch my pinky fingers or my index fingers to the other keys so I'm jumping around the keyboard a lot because I have short fingers so and my yeah short fingers that's yeah so little kids like they can play the piano and they're fine they're just jumping their hands more often than adults will so it depends on technique let's see okay so what can make you type faster. There are a few things, some of which you probably already know. One of which is make sure the temperature is not too cold and your fingers aren't stiff and freezing. 
So type in a warm environment or do some hand warm up or run in place or something until you're warm. Another thing which people probably talk a lot is about ergonomics, so your posture. You want to be sitting straight, elbows at 90. Uh, there's a graphic in the blog post that tells you exactly how to sit. You've probably seen it already. Um, where to position your monitors, what height your chair should be relative to your desk, etc. And then the last thing is practice. It's always going to be practice. So you can't just expect to, oh, you're going to buy this fancy mechanical keyboard and your words per minute goes up by like 15. No, you got to practice. Um, but a mechanical keyboard can make a significant difference depending on what you're using already. So if you're using a membrane keyboard and the keys get stuck or they don't uh, register your keystroke, then that may slow you down. If you're using a linear keyboard and it's not giving you any feedback, that may be an issue. So for beginners, um, you should. I looked up this stuff and it says you should probably use a clicky or a tactile keyboard. So you get that tactile feedback from each uh, keystroke that you make, but you also get that audio feedback when the the sound makes a noise, it's like, oh, I pressed it and it's registered. So I can move on now. Um, some people have talked about whether you want to bottom out when you press or not. I don't bottom out all my keys. I wait until I get that feel and then I jump to the next key. Um, and sometimes you might accidentally skip a letter, but it just depends on preference and practice. So if you practice and you know the way your keyboard feels, um, you really don't make mistakes and let's see and that's it so yeah in summary have really good posture have a tactile or clicky keyboard make sure your fingers are warm and practice a ton thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye